Hello to you and welcome to Adelante Chicago. I'm Lourdes Duarte. Thank you so much for joining us today. Bienvenidos. Let's begin with the battle at City Hall right now and what it means for Chicago's Latino, Black, and Asian communities. There's a redrawn ward map, a draft of it, on the table, but the City Council can't seem to agree on it. Joining us to explain a little bit more about this political analyst, he's got all the answers, Paul Lisnack. Thank you so much. Buenos días, amiga. Buenos días y bienvenido. There you oh, go. Yes. <laughs> nice to have you here. Okay, I want to talk about this draft of this ward map. Yeah. Why is it so important for people? Why do people need to get involved in this and know about it? Well, for one thing, because because there are people that say, oh, nobody cares about right. these about these ward maps. Well, the ward map determines who your older person is. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people do care who their older person is. You want you want trash address, you need trash cans in the backyard, mm -hmm. you got rat problem, on and on. All the things that aldermanic offices do, they have the most direct contact with the public. So absolutely, and let's be honest, there are some offices that are more responsive than others. Everybody wants to be sure that their alderman's going to be responsive, and that's why. All right, so let's get to the details mm -hmm. yeah. of it. So they've got this draft out there. Each community... Can, by the way, can I just say, yeah. we shouldn't have to have this discussion. <laughs> December 1st was the deadline. So we should be here talking today about mm -hmm. saying, let's talk about the new map that passed city council. We can't do that because they missed the deadline. Okay, and in the meantime, <laughs> each community is fighting to um, have sort of a bigger piece of the pie, that's right? That's right. Um, what is the Latino community fighting for at this point? So the Latinos are fighting to get um, uh, 15 majority wards, which, which probably means 15 Latino older people uh, to represent them. Uh, the current map that was released yesterday, although no vote or anything, uh, has 14 Latinos, uh, Gil Viegas, the head of the Latino they said no, that, that's not enough. Um, but we're also dealing with, and our viewers can see that right now, so 14 Latino majority wards is what they're being given by this current mm -hmm. map. The Black Caucus is being given 16 majority wards. Uh, you see it says one black influence ward. People may wonder what does that mean? Well, uh, the Walter Burnett's ward, currently the largest minority is black, mm -hmm. so they're basically giving that ward to him, and that makes it a total of 17 primarily African-American wards. Um, so the fighting is over that. You do see, by the way, an Asian majority ward. That's a first. So it's not just Chinatown. It's Chinatown, but they're pulling other areas. But you see there's a lot of Asian-Americans in Bridgeport. Bridgeport, what does that mean? That's Daly territory, mm -hmm. right? And so Patrick Daly Thompson, who's the current alderman from that area, he's not happy about that. The fighting continues, but it's really all about representation. And people like uh, Carlos Ramirez Rosa, he goes, this isn't fair, this isn't right. Um, and, 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 you know, some have said we're being fed a bill of goods. The map's being drawn by Michael Casper, who used to do this job for Mike Madigan. When you do look at the maps, they zig, they zag, they do all sorts of interesting things, and mostly yeah, for political all purposes. all over the place, all over the place. We'll talk about uh, some of the arguments that they're making, sure. but I think I want to get to this idea of a referendum and mm -hmm. what role that would play, because already there are people moving in saying uh, we need to have a referendum. So Change Illinois, they put a map forward saying this needs to be a people's drawn map. It's one that doesn't involve politics, and that would that's not that wasn't passed, so mm -hmm. they, they're hoping that might be a referendum. Here's the bottom line. 41 members of city council have to support a map. When you get 41 people, you have your map. That doesn't exist right now. Mm -hmm. So right now, in fact, what happened this at the end of this week, was that 15 aldermen have put in a petition for a referendum. Um, and so now any 10 aldermen can get together, put a map together, and then on June 28th there will be the vote, and we could be picking from a whole bunch of maps uh, that get presented on that day, one drawn by the Black Caucus, one by the Latino Caucus, all sorts of possibilities. Those would have to be filed 40 days ahead of time, so that's around mid-May or so uh, is when they'd have to be filed. However, what people have to remember, although they blew the December 1st deadline, it doesn't really count, because any time they get 41 people together on a map, that means there aren't 10 people to support a map, because the total is 50. Anytime they get 41, you'll get your map. All right, June 28th, though, a long ways away. Sure it is, yep. uh, So are we thinking that there's probably going to be, most likely, a map in place before we ever get to that point? Well, are are we, we optimistic enough to see that happen? I think the way City Council works, we haven't actually, people might say, was there ever a referendum? Did City Council ever not get it together? Yeah, back in 1992, there was a referendum. Now, 10 years ago, this happens every 10 years. 10 years ago, um, there, there, we blew the deadline. They blew the deadline, uh, but eventually a map got passed. So my sense is, you know, are the mayor and these aldermen who are very concerned, that's why some of my comments earlier, how these things get drawn in the zigzag, they're not going to leave that for public selection. Mm -hmm. So they will one way or another strike some sort of deal. Will it be out in the open and transparent? They say it will. Okay. I want to get into some of the arguments right they're fun. now because I think they're very <laughs> interesting. And one of them, um, the Latino caucus obviously wanting to get that extra award. The argument has been 
what? Why should they not be allowed to get that extra award? So explain that. Yeah, it's well, very so interesting. The, the argument for it is we are now, according to the census, this thing is being built on census data. Let's understand that. So l the Latino community has grown. It's the largest growth in the community. Well, why wouldn't they have more representation? So says uh, Alderman Viegas uh, and others, uh, Carlos Ramirez Lopez. Uh, you know, all of them say that. Why don't we have um, a larger community? The Black Caucus basically is in the position of saying, yes, while their numbers have decreased in the census, they don't want to give up power and influence, so they're fighting for everything they have. So they basically have said, we'll give the Latinos, you can have an extra award, you wanted two, we'll give you one, but I don't know if we can make this other one happen. And of course, the Asian American community going, hello, we've never had anything. So is it possible with the large number, and it's an increasing number of Asian Americans in this community, I think it's 7% uh, in, in, in certain parts, it's like, can we get some representation yeah. here? And that's why they will be carving out award. I thought it was interesting, though, that age, the age of many in the Latino community comes up. Why? Yeah. So that's great. So the Black Caucus response uh, or comment, one of them has been, we really don't need to help the Latino community because the way we see it, um, it's they're too young and they're too young to vote. So we shouldn't be thinking about that. In other words, all of a sudden these maps should be should be based on age determination as we go forward. Um, and the Latino Caucus has said, that's ridiculous. Yeah, that's ridiculous. And, and here's one reason the Latinos probably have a stronger argument on that. It might be that if you are six years old to Today, uh, mm -hmm. that 10 years from now, when we will do this again, mm -hmm. you'll be 16 and you won't be voting. But if you're 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, you're going to vote in this next 10 year period. Mm -hmm. Should we not count you? That's an interesting question. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the mayor, I imagine that she's weighing in on all of this, but she was in D.C. for a while while this redrawn draft map was being presented. So the two sides of that, some would say when the tough get going, uh, or sorry, when the going gets tough, the tough go to D.C. <laughs> um, but the mayor addressed that, and so I want to be fair to her, too. She basically said, look, what am I supposed to do? Stay here while we're presenting a map that is not going to get voted on, that it's not going to happen, or should I go to D.C. where I have a chance to fight for dollars and make things happen? It's a a good argument and it makes a lot of sense. One could argue, but Mayor, you might have waited a day uh, to make that trip, still go after all that money, but at least preside over the craziness that is, you know, at City Council right now. So people will differ about whether she could go. There are people behind her saying she knew what was going on, forget it, let her go, and others that just go, you know, she's the mayor, you ought to be here, deal with the craziness. All right, the clock keeps on ticking, <laughs> yeah. Tom. Uh, Paul is there.